saints don't stop praying, for the Lord is nigh. Saints don't stop praying, hear your cry, for the Lord has promised, and His word.
So if Jesus said prayer was to be a part of the apostles' life, what was good for the apostles is good for us today. But he wanted them to know that they must pray. And he said, when you pray, he left them with a model prayer. And not saying that you always have to pray that way, but it was a model prayer. And he wanted to teach them, amen, a letter prayer as a model for them to recognize and realize, amen, who is the source of all things. When I say the source of all things, amen, source of life, amen, source of, amen, providing, amen, source of protecting us, and that source is God. So he said, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven. Amen. And he wanted them to know that their prayer, amen, must be directed towards God. Praise the Lord and not towards him. Praise the Lord. So many times uh, you, you hear people praying to Jesus, amen. But my understanding is we don't pray to Jesus, but we pray to God through Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus, I believe Paul said it like this, whatsoever we do in word or deed, we must do all in the name of Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And Jesus also taught that whatsoever you pray, ask in the Father in my name. Praise the Lord. It shall be done unto you. Praise the Lord. So at times we, amen, may not have understood, amen, that our prayers must not be praying to Jesus, but we got to pray to God through Jesus. Amen. Because no man can come to the Father except they come by Jesus. Prayer is important for the believers. Amen. To bring us to that place of maturity. Prayer is important because it builds our relationship with God. And many times people get confused between praying and meditating. Now, prayer is when you are talking to God. Amen. But when you are meditating, that's God talking to you. Praise the Lord. And amen. So when we pray, amen, we're acknowledging God. Believe Solomon said it like this, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways you got to acknowledge the Lord. Amen. And when we pray, we acknowledge the Lord. Amen. And he shall direct our path. So here Jesus, amen, is teaching and giving a parable. Amen. Concerning how men and always to pray. Amen. And not to faint. But I don't believe he's just talking to men. Amen. In the sense of male. Praise the Lord. But I believe, amen, he's talking to the entire body of Christ. Amen. As Paul said it like this, amen. Finally, my brethren, amen, be strong in the Lord. Now, you know the word brethren don't always have to mean male. Amen. He's talking to the body of Christ in a collective way. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was teaching them that man had always to pray. Amen. And not to faint. And we're living in a time where many people sometimes their prayer life Amen. Uh, I would say diminish. And because it could mean many things going on in their lives that they just don't have the strength or the desire to pray anymore. And that is a dangerous place to be because if Satan can cut us off from communicating with God, amen, then he have us. And Satan knows, amen, the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal, but they're mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds. And if Satan can hinder us or stop us as the people of God from praying, amen, then we will watch our spiritual life, amen, begin to go down and have no more desire to pray, have no desire to seek the Lord, amen, because of different things in our life. Amen. But as the people of God, we must persevere. Amen. We got to keep the prayer wheel turning. Praise the Lord. Because prayer worked back then and prayer will always work today. Amen. So he said, men will always.
always to pray. Amen. And not to faint. Praise the Lord. We can't faint in these last days. Amen. We got to keep crying out to the Lord and seeking the Lord and ask the Lord. Amen. Because this will take prayer. Amen. For God's will and God's plan to be accomplished in our lives. Amen. And if you don't pray, amen, then God's plan and God's will will not be accomplished in our lives. Praise the Lord. He went on to say there was in a city a judge with fear not God, neither regarded men. Praise the Lord. And you look around today, you can find people just like that. Amen. People in this world, they have no fear for God. Praise the Lord. There's just no reverence, amen, for God. Praise the Lord. There was a time that they said back in the days, amen, when the Sunday was a day where the majority of people, amen, will find themselves in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Back then they said even certain business, amen, will close down and people would head to the house of God. Praise the Lord. But today, amen, men don't fear God like they used to. Praise the Lord. But there are some folks that do fear God. Amen. And they show reverence and respect to God. Praise the Lord. But this judge in the city, he was one that was self-centered. Praise the Lord. And because of his position, amen, he recognized and realized, amen, I'm a judge. Amen. And I have no need of God. But the Bible said the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Praise the Lord. And people are living in the world today. Amen. They're going about their business, going about their daily life, not thinking, amen, and acknowledging God, that God do exist. And sometimes folks don't believe that there is a God, amen, until they're laying up in the hospital or until, amen, they're, you know, in some collision or, or just something that happened to them. That's the only time, amen, that they reach out to God, amen. But God is not a God that we only remember him, amen, when we need something, amen, but he's a God that lives, Praise the Lord, and we got to recognize him and to honor him, amen, and to reverence him that God exists, amen, even when things are not going bad in our life. But this judge, amen, he had no fear for God, neither did he regard men. Praise the Lord. He saw himself as better, amen, than others. Praise the Lord, and that is it, the way we live in this world. You got some folks that think they're better than other people. Praise the Lord, but all of us, amen, from dust we are, and dust we return. Praise the Lord, the only thing different between the church and the world, amen, is that we have the Spirit of God, amen, and we have repented of our sin. And the only thing good about us, praise the Lord, is the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord, because without the Holy Ghost, amen, we are nothing. Praise the Lord, but the Bible said, I am what I am. Praise the Lord, only because of what? Of the grace of God. But this man had no fear for God. Neither did he regard it, amen, his fellow, fellow men. But it went on to say, there was a widow in that city. And she came unto this unjust judge, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. I don't know what was going on in her life. But the Bible said this woman was a widow. In other words, amen, she did not have her husband no longer with her. And I don't know, amen, if they waited until her husband was dead, amen, then to begin to start trouble with this woman. But for some reason, amen, they began to trouble this woman. They began to bring her, amen, probably sleepless nights, amen, sad days, disappointment in her life, but they began to trouble this woman. But this woman remember, amen, that there was a judge in the city. And she went to the judge, praise the Lord, and verse number three, and there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. But the unjust judge would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubled me, 
I will avenge her, lest her continue coming, she weary me. That judge realized, amen, that this woman was, amen, persistent. In other words, that she didn't give up, amen, because she went and knocked on his door on Monday, amen, and he did not answer, amen. She decided, amen, that I'm going to keep on going back, praise the Lord, and it will take me seven days, amen, to keep on knocking at his door, amen. I want to trouble him so much, praise the Lord, that he can't even sleep. But she had that mind and she wanted to get the judge attention. And she began to trouble him. She began to call upon him. Praise the Lord because she wanted the judge, amen, to avenge her of her adversary. Whatever trouble, amen, there was causing her. She realized that only the judge, amen, can bring about the change. Only the judge can deal with her enemies. But after a while, amen, the judge realized, if I don't do something concerning this woman, cry out to me, amen, she will weary me. Praise the Lord, but he decided, amen, I'm going to get out of bed, amen, I'm going to go down and I'm going to answer her call. I'm going to listen to her petition. I want to hear why is it so important that she keep on troubling me. It must be something serious. Praise the Lord. It must be something, amen, that is troubling her so much that she keep on coming and calling my name. And when the woman began to explain to the judge what was going on, he recognized, amen, it was important for him to come and answer the woman's call. The Bible went on to say, and the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry night and day unto him though he bear a long time with them so the moral of the story is if that unjust judge that had no fear for God needed any regarded man but at some time compassion arose in his heart and he was able to stop thinking about himself and begin to hear the cry of this woman that had nobody to defend her. He realized, amen, that her trust was in him. Amen. She was looking to him, amen, for the answer. So it is with the body of Christ. Amen. When we begin to pray, when we begin to acknowledge the Lord, our prayers is not in vain. Sometimes it seems as though that God is not answering our prayer, but we got to realize, amen, that we're living in a hostile, amen, and an evil world. And the world that we're living in today is governed by the God of this world. And as Paul said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shall be shined in their hearts. One of the things that Satan desired to do, amen, is to block the prayers of the saints. But even in the days of Daniel, Daniel kept on praying, not knowing, amen, from the first day he began to seek the Lord, amen, his prayer was answered. But not knowing, amen, that he did not see in the spiritual realm, amen, that there was one, amen, a demonic spirit, amen, who was controlling, amen, the powers of the air. And God sent Gabriel, amen, to deliver the message unto Daniel. But Gabriel was unable to deliver the answer to the man of God. But Daniel had no idea, amen, what was going on in the spiritual world. But Daniel kept on praying. He was persistent in his prayer. He did not give up, amen, because God didn't answer him on the first day. But yet he did not know God did answer him on the first day. And so it is sometime with us, praise the Lord, as we pray and we seek God. And it seems as though that the Lord is not answering our prayer. But we got to remember, amen, that there is a God of this world. And Satan's desire is to hinder the prayers of the righteous. But God had to send Michael, one of the archangels, amen, to allow Gabriel. 
Gabriel to deliver the answer to Daniel. And when Gabriel got to Daniel, he said, Man, oh man, greatly be loved. From the first day that you made your supplication unto the Lord, the Lord heard your cry. Amen. But the prince of Persia, he withstood me. But nevertheless, Michael, one of the chief prince, was able to come and fight with the prince of Persia, and I was able to break through. Amen. And get to you. So people of God, we got to keep on praying because it's going to take prayer for us to get our breakthrough. Praise the Lord. And we got to pray night. Praise the Lord. We got to pray during the day and we got to pray at night. As we sung the song, saints don't stop praying for the Lord is nigh. Saints don't stop praying. Amen. You hear your cry. For the Lord is promised and his word you. So the same thing that that unjust judge did. The Bible says, shall not God amen, do the same for those amen, that cry out to him night and day. God does hear our prayer. Praise the Lord. And one day, God will avenge us. Amen. It may not be in our lifetime. Praise the Lord. But Paul said it like this. Amen. God have appointed a day into which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. Praise the Lord. So you don't have to fight your own battle. Praise the Lord. The Bible said vengeance belongeth unto God and God will repay. Praise the Lord. So those that do you wrong, Jesus will pray for them that despite will use you and persecute you and say all manner of things amen against you. He said pray for them. Amen. And that's what we got to do. We got to pray for those that despite to use us. Even if they have done us wrong. Amen. We don't fight our battles. Praise the Lord with our hands. But we fight our battles on our knees. And we turn it over to the Lord. Amen. And take our problems unto the Lord. And when we take our problems to the Lord, God will fight our battle. Amen. God knows every heart's desire. Everything. So it may appear as though that God don't see and God don't understand. It may appear that, amen, God is taking too long. But God knows when to move in. God knows when to bring about the change. And in our prayer, we got to let patience have our perfect work that we may be found entire and wanted nothing. God will avenge the saints. Praise the Lord. Even in the book of Revelation, those that were slain, they began to cry out, Oh God, oh Lord, how long will thou not avenge us? How long, God? Because many of them had died. And they began to cry out to God, God, how long will you let evil, amen, prevail upon the earth? How long will you let evil men continue to be evil? But they're coming a day when evil will meet its end. But that end will not come, my friend, until the Lord Jesus come to fight that great battle. For the Bible said, Jews said, Behold the Lord coming with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon the earth and to convince all of their ungodly deeds and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. You don't Jesus, but they're coming a day, as the Bible said in Psalms chapter number two, kiss the son, lest he be angry. Praise the Lord. One day you got to face the King of Kings, amen, and the Lord of Lords. But today, if you will hear his voice, the Bible said, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can come to know him. And I'm committing or repeating some sinner's prayer. Amen. I'm talking about total commitment unto the Lord. For Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny everything. He must deny his mother. He must deny his father. He must deny his sister. And then Jesus said, he got to deny himself. And then he got to take up his cross and follow me. Today, my friend, the door of the church is still open. Amen. And Jesus has not returned yet. That lets you know that you still have an opportunity, amen, to make 
my friend. Once the church is taken out of this world, there will be great distress, great trouble will come upon this earth. But I want you to know while the church is still on this earth, you can escape the wrath of God. Amen. You must believe that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Don't stay out from the body of Christ. Amen. Run to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Run to the place of safety. The place of safety is to have fellowship with God and his son Jesus Christ. And if you don't know the way, amen, let me introduce you unto the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Praise the Lord. I am the truth and I am the life. No man can come unto the Father except they come by me. Today the door of the church is still open. Amen. You still have an opportunity. Amen. To come, praise the Lord, is to come to the place where you can get your soul overhauled because your soul will spend eternity somewhere. The body goes back to the ground. The bread goes back to God that gave it. In. But remember, your soul will live on. Your soul is a part of you that will never forget. Your soul always remember what you have done upon the earth. And one day God will call you into question. And he will ask you, praise the Lord, what have you done? Amen, with the bread that I have given you. And the time that I afford you, amen, to be in my house and to hear the word of God being preached unto you. But if you turn in deaf ears, there may come a day, my friend, when you will wish that you had listened to the voice of God. Amen. But today can be your day. And all you got to do is surrender and turn it over to Jesus. So saints of God, let us keep on praying. Amen. Because it's going to take prayer. Amen. For us to get our breakthrough. It's going to take fasting. I mean sincere fasting. Sincere praying. Amen. And seeking God. And I'm not talking about a quick minute prayer. I'm talking about spending time before God. I'm talking about shutting that television off. I'm talking about staying off of Facebook. Praise the Lord. Staying off of social media. Amen. And seek God. As the Bible said, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him. Amen. While he lives. So it's time for the church. Amen. To go back to that place. Amen. To return to their first law. If you fell off.
and know what we're going through, but keep on persevering through prayer. Because prayer worked back then, and prayer will work today. And again, my friend, as we close this message, it will take prayer for the breakthrough to happen. But if you dedicate your prayer life to the Lord, God will give you that breakthrough. But you got to seek him in an honest way. Praise the Lord. You just can't pray and just pray. But you got to pray believing. And when you approach God, the Bible said, He that cometh to God must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Once you come before God with a sincere heart, praise the Lord, it catches God's attention. And God pays attention unto a sincere heart. A sincere cry. See, a lot of people pray, but they're not praying a sincere prayer. is even out of the will of God. But when we pray, God will answer our prayer only if it's according to his will. But how will we know concerning the will of God? We have to let patience have our perfect work. And seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. God will answer our prayer. Let your prayer request be real. Be honest with God. Amen because God is always honest. But take it to the Lord in prayer and leave all your problems there. Continue to per persevere. Continue pers to persist in your prayer life. Build your spiritual life by prayer, by fasting, and keep the prayer wheel turning. Ask Peter on the, on the day of Pentecost, encourage the people of God. Save yourself from this unto word generation. I encourage you today to save yourself from this unto word generation. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May God give you peace is our prayer. Keep on persevering in your prayer life. God bless you and heaven smile upon you in Jesus name. Can we say praise the Lord.